So our next topic is the surface integral of a vector field. So what we have now is some surface. Here's a surface. Surface. Let's make it more surface-ish, like that. And let's call it with the unoriginal name S. And then there's some vector field involved. Remember that we like to draw vectors fields by plotting an arrow at every point, which is the direction of the field. And in fact, the arrows are not the same length because the field, the arrow has magnitude as well. So this is F. And I want to understand what is the integral of the field F over the surface. And before I understand the, the mathematics, uh, the, f the, the formula for it, I want to understand what does it mean. What does it measure? What does it do? Um, but before that, I want to take a step back, since I know this is kind of a classic point where, where the accumulation of the various sorts of integrals sometimes makes students very confused. And, and I want to I wanna quickly, I prepared a little uh, uh, um, uh, crash course on everything we covered so far in terms of these line integrals and surface integrals. Let's go over it real quick, see that everything uh, compiles and makes sense, and then we'll get back to this. So we started out with curves and line integrals. So a curve, R of t, is given by a parametrization, uh, sorry, a curve gamma is given by a parametrization R of t, where t ranges over some interval, could be an infinite interval, and we're thinking of a curve in three-dimensional space. There, that's why it has three components. If it's a planar curve, then there's no z component. The line integral of a scalar function, little f, so f is a function of x, y, z now, the line integral of the function is defined as the integral over the parametrization, so it ranges from a to b dt, of the function evaluated on the curve, so the curve is given by this, so it's f of this, and then we multiply it by the length of the uh, tangent vector, r prime. So r prime is a vector whose components are x prime, y prime, and z prime. Okay? So everything here is in t, it's an integral dt, and we did several examples of this. Okay? We saw a geometric meaning for this, it's the area of a fence, and we discussed the physical meaning, which is the uh, mass given, mass density described by f, for example. Then we have a vector field. A vector field is again a function, but this time the range of the function is R3. So the function itself gives out a vector. That's why it's called a vector field. And each component is a function of three variables. Okay, so there's P, Q, and R. And the line integral of a vector field, which we denote by F dot dr, and this is only notation, this has no practical meaning, this is what has the practical meaning. This is what we calculate. So it's the integral from a to b dt, a and b are the range of the parameter t, of the field evaluated on the curve, x of t, y of t, z of t, dot the tangent vector. Okay, so this is how we defined the line integral of a vector field, and its physical interpretation is work of a force given by f. Okay? And another way of writing this would be to break it up into all its components. So f is going to be this long thing. And remember that x, y, and z are now x of t, y of t, z of t. R prime is x prime, y prime, z prime. And this dot product makes p meet x prime plus q times y prime plus r prime, r times z prime. Right? Do you see that? And therefore, a shorthand notation for it, instead of writing x prime t dt, we write dx. So this is shorthand notation, p times x prime t dt, or in short, dx, plus q y prime t dt, or in short, dy, plus r dz. So again, this is something you cannot work with. It's just notation to hint at this, or even the expanded version of this. OK, clear? Is everything kind of fitting into place? The, does this short review help? Good? Okay. 
And then we had green theorem. Green theorem only applies to the plane. So the domain is now a planar domain, D, and F is a field that only has two components, P and Q, in X and Y. And then Green's theorem says, if you have a domain D with boundary gamma, the double integral over the domain, over the entire domain, of this specific derivative sort of expression, okay, the Q sub X minus P sub Y, equals the line integral over the boundary of D of the original field dot dr. Okay? So this is a summary of everything we did with curves. What we're doing now is repeating this entire line of, 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 of material for surfaces. So we're going to have a parametrization of a surface. We're going to have the equivalent notion that replaces the uh, um, uh, tangent vector, which is going to be the normal now. We're going to have line in, uh, surface integrals of scalar functions, surface integrals of vector fields, and we're going to have a couple of theorems that, that relate surface integrals to other types of integrals. Those are going to be Stokes' theorem and Gauss's theorem. Okay, so here's the next board of our review, which is not complete yet. This is what we have to fill in. So a surface S is given by a parametrization, R of UV, now there are two parameters, X of UV, Y of U, Z of UV, and UV belongs to some domain in R2, so this is a parametrization of the surface. Um, keep looking at both boards and comparing, okay? See that everything is really along the same lines. Then we have the normal vector to the surface, which prescribes, which, which bless you, which gives the, the, the tangent plane to the surface at that point, and we found out that the normal vector is R sub u cross R sub v. So R sub u is a vector whose components are x sub u, y sub u, z sub u. Okay? So this is the normal vector. Surface area, oh, I forgot to write uh, length of a curve there. Never mind. Surface area is given by the integral over the domain. This is the domain of the parameters, du dv, of the length of the normal. And when there's a function, the surface integral of a scalar function, again, written in short like this, this does not have any useful application. This is just a way of writing it, of expressing it in short. This is what we really need to calculate. So it's the double integral over the domain of the parameters, du dv, those are the parameters, of the function evaluated on the surface, on the surface times the length of the normal. So it's like sticking the function into here. Okay? And this is as far as we got so far. Now we want to have, instead of a scalar function, we want to have a vector field, and we want to find out what is the surface integral of a vector field and what it means. The physical interpretation of the surface integral of a scalar function is very similar to, to that of a uh, line integral of a scalar function, f, if f, for example, is the mass density or the charge density in every point in space, then the total charge or the total mass of the surface is given by this integral, okay? In fact, every, every integral of a scalar function has, has such an interpretation, whether it's a, a calc 1 integral or a double integral or a triple integral or a line integral of a scalar function or a surface integral of a scalar function. They always have the interpretation of this summation process of something local, the density, summing it gives the total mass. Okay. So after all this long introduction, we want to do surface integrals of vector fields. So back here, so we have a field, F is now a field uh, PQR, so F is PQR in short, has three components, each of three variables, and S is a surface, S is a surface and it has its parameter parameterization, uh, R of UV, and what is this thing? So, so what this surface integral represents is a notion that we call flux. So what is, what is flux? So flux measures 
um, the rate of the flow of the field through the surface per, 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 uh, per time. Okay, or you can say the, the rate of flow per, the rate of flow, rate already says per time, the rate of flow per unit area. Okay, so we want to know the rate of the flow of the field through the surface. Here's a way of imagining it. So, so far we, we, when we thought of fields, we thought of force. Maybe we, we, we mentioned that um, uh, the electromagnetic field is also a field. But here it's most convenient in order to imagine to just think of uh, uh, water, flowing water as a field. Okay, so suppose you have a river. You have a river. Here's the river flowing here. And uh, the, the rate of the flow is given by this F, that's, that expresses the flow of the river, the flow of the water, okay? And you take this net, just a regular net with plenty of holes, and you put it in the river. And you want to know what is the rate of the flow of the river through the net, okay? That's the flux. That's what you're measuring, okay? And that's, it kind of, I think, this drawing kind of uh, fits the, the idea, okay? Now, what's important to notice it is if you put your net like this and the river is flowing like this, then the, 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 the vectors at each point that, that represent the field are pointing perpendicular to the net. So the flow is really going through the net, right? So the, 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 remember, the flux is measuring the flow per unit area. So you would take a unit area, multiply it by F, and then sum over all these little units. Think of a one single hole as a unit area, okay? But if you put the net, the same net, if you put it like this, there's nothing flowing through it. Do you agree? If the flow is going this way and you put a net like this, nothing is flowing, thr flowing through it, right? Try to sa say that three times fast, flowing through it, flowing. Try saying that one time fast. Okay. So nothing is flowing through it, right? So why is that? Because the normal is going in this direction, whereas the field is perpendicular to it, right? And if you put the net like this, in, in some form of diagonal, uh, in a diagonal position with, with respect to the flow of the river, then there is stuff flowing through it, but it's not exactly the, the entire flow, right? And if you think of it, if you think of it, let's make a little, a little picture. If you take a little hole in the net, so a little part of the surface, and, and for the net it's a flat surface, but in general here's a little surface element. So this is a little surface element. We're going to call it delta S. This is a little surface element. And suppose the normal at this point is pointing in this direction. Here's a unit normal pointing in this direction. And suppose the force at this point is given by, not the force, the, the, the field, the flow of the water, for example, is given by, let's say, this. So this is F. Only the projection on F, the component of F in the direction of the normal, contributes to the flow. Do you agree? Okay, so if this is a surface element, um, let's write only the component, the component of F in the direction of N contributes to the flux. Okay, is this, is this clear? So, if this is a little surface element, it's a little tiny surface element, it sits, for example, here, here's our little delta S, and we can assume, we can assume that over here on delta S, the force I keep saying the force, and I don't mean that, but it could be a force, but the, 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 the um, capital F, the 
the field, whatever it is, we can assume that it's almost, almost constant on a tiny little surface element delta s. So the flux only on this little surface element is going to be, so the flux, the rate of the flow on um, delta s is going to be the area, delta s. If it's a unit area, then it's just one. But if it's just a tiny area, whatever the area is, times the component of f in the direction of the normal. And we already know that that is precisely f dot, uh, the unit normal. Do you agree? OK, so this is the, the flux through this little uh, delta s um, surface element. Now, if you want to know the flux through the entire uh, surface, we're going to sum all these up. So um, on S, it's going to be, so here, this is that, or approximately that, because, and on S, it's going to be approximately the sum over all these little delta S's of F dot N, right? And it's a double sum, because if we go back here for a second, we're dividing this into a grid, right? We're, do you agree? So it's going to be a double sum over the both directions. And in fact, where the division is going to be down in the parametrization, in the u's and the v's, like we always do. And so this is, this is approximately what it is. And what it is not approximately, when we take the limit, making these little delta s's smaller and smaller and smaller and the summation more accurate, what we get equals the double integral of f dot the normal ds. OK? So this is what we're, what we're measuring. The flux on s, the rate of the flow per unit area on the entire surface is given by this integral. This is, if you look at it, this is a surface integral of a scalar function, right? f is a vector field, n, the normal at every point, is a vector. So this is the dot product of two vectors, it's a scalar. So at every point we get a scalar, so it's a scalar function. Do you agree? Okay. But we don't want to write it like this. We want to take a few more steps and write it as the integral of f. And that's not going to be too hard, because note, so here's a little remark, f dot n, I can rewrite as f dot, what is the normal vector? It's the vector divided by its length. Do you agree? Right? That's, by definition, the, 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 the unit normal vector. It's the normal vector divided by its length. Right? So if I replace this here and recall the definition, the definition of a surface integral for a scalar function, which is here on the board, let's take a peek at it. The definition of a scalar function integrated over a surface is, take the function, multiply it by the length of the normal du dv, right? So here I'm going to have f dot the normal times the length of the normal. So let's write that. So this is by definition, this is by definition, in fact I don't need this, I'll rewrite it again. This is by definition the double integral over the domain of f dot n, or let's rewrite it now, f dot n divided by the length of n times the length of n du dv, right? And now these n's, the length of the normal vector, can cancel out. So what I get, what I get is usually written the double integral over the surface, or sorry, over the domain 
of f dot the normal du dv. Okay? And f dot the normal, so this is abbreviated by the double integral over the surface of f dot ds. This is the abbreviation. Okay? So this is a double integral, a surface integral of a field. The surface integral of a field is, in fact, the integral of the field dot the normal, which is a scalar function, abbreviated like this, and what we need to calculate is precisely this. Okay, and this is all in the non-expanded version. If you want to expand it, it's the field calculated at x of uv, y of uv, z of uv, right, times the normal du dv. Okay, so let me add one more thing and then we'll write it on that board and erase everything and make some remarks. What is f dot n? f dot n, this is, this is the scalar function that we, we're plugging in here when we do the calculation, right? This is a double integral. f dot n f dot n is f dot r sub u cross r sub v. Do you agree? And what is this sort of thing? This is, a, this is a product of three vectors where we're taking the cross product and then dotting it with the third function. We had a name for this, remember? This was what we called the triple product. And the way to write a triple product is by a determinant whose components are the components of f, p, q, r, and then the components of the other two vectors. Remember that? So we have here x sub u, y sub u, z sub u, and x sub v, y sub v, z sub v. This is in fact what we're putting in here in order to calculate. Okay. And for examples, it might get pretty, uh, quite a mouthful, this thing, because P is a scalar function of three variables, as is Q, as is R, and these are partial derivatives of functions of three variables. So there's a lot of, of um, stuff here. Okay. And usually the way we write it, we don't put this in here and then start doing the calculations inside the integral. We first calculate this, and then once we get the final answer, which is going to be a function of u and v, right? It's p evaluated on x of u, v, y of u, v, z of u, v, and so on. So after we do all the calculations, then we plug it here and calculate the integral. We'll see examples in a minute. Okay? Yes? I ask you, like the last passage you did, yeah, from, from here to here. It's not a passage. No, it's, no. Not, it's not something that I can, that I can uh, give meaning to. This is just notation. Ah, notation. notation. This is the actual thing. Okay? Clear? So let me write all that. And note, note by the way, you'll, you'll see sometimes. So if you do open this, I don't want to do it. it, it it's just doing it, right? It's P times YUZV minus ZUYV plus Q times or minus Q times XUZV minus ZUXV, right? I can write, I can expand all this, but you know how to do that, right? But what you get is that P meets Y's and Z's. Do you see that? Q meets X's and Z's, and R meets X's and Y's. Do you see that? So a shorthand notation for this thing, you will sometimes also see written, again, an analogy to the, to the line case. I'll write it over here. I'll, I'll write the summary over here of the entire thing. So the surface integral of a vector field, denoted in short by the integral of f, capital F, dot ds. So this is again, just like this, this is just notation. It's not something you can calculate. What it is, is the double integral over the domain d of f dot the normal 
du dv. Okay? And this in turn can be written, in turn this can be written, so I'll expand this um, just once, or maybe I'll, I'll need a couple of lines. So this can be written as the double integral over d, and what you get is p times, remember p met that little 2 by 2 determinant of only y's and z's. Remember? And in fact, that's some form of a 2-by-2 of a, a two two determinant of partial derivatives of two functions with respect to two variables is a Jacobian. So a shorthand notation would be p times dyz to duv plus q times d. And here, the, or you, we can write a minus here, but instead of writing a minus here, it's more uh, common to write d, uh, instead of dxz, to write dzx. That's in place of the minus to duv, replacing the order of z and x, plus r times dxy to duv. And all of this du dv, and you might think that this is the expanded version, but remember, all of this you need to calculate at x of uv, y of uv, z of uv, right? It's all calculated on the surface, so if you want to write the whole thing, it's going to be very long, but we usually don't do that. We usually calculate this and then plug it into the integral, examples shortly, and this has a short notation, just like for line integrals, so for surface integrals, sometimes you'll see it written, the integral over the surface of p, instead of dyz to duv, du dv, we just write p dy dz plus q dz dx plus r dx dy. Again, this is just notation, not something you can actually work with. The only thing that's worth remembering is this. This is what you actually work with. Okay, and what this measures is the flux of the field through the given surface. That's the, that's the interpretation. Okay, questions on this before we move on to examples? Now one quick remark, it's independent of the parametrization you choose for the surface. Almost independent, almost independent. If you take the normal in the opposite direction, you get a minus sign. And you can think of that as the river. Okay? If you take the normal to the, to the surface in this direction, and the river is flowing this way, you'll get a certain flux. If you choose the normal in this direction, you'll get minus that flux. Do you see that? So it's independent of the parametrization. It is dependent on the direction of the normal. Changing the direction of the normal introduces a minus sign. Okay, it, just like changing the orientation of a curve introduces a minus sign to the work, to the line integral of a vector field. Okay? Okay, so let's, let's uh, stop uh, this clip here, and in the next clip we'll do, we'll do an example.